Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of The Selfish Woman. I'm super excited to be here with my guest today, Lillian Victoria. She's an entertainment executive turned lifestyle entrepreneur and coach, and she works with high achievers to overcome their loss to achieve their goals. Sounds amazing. Welcome, Lillian. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited you're here. I can't wait to get into all the stuff uh, you work with high achieving people. And I know our listeners are also that way. And so let's talk about it. I'd love to start with just getting to know a little bit about your journey. How did you get here? Entertainment executive sounds interesting. I bet there's a story in there. Yes. Um, You know, to, to really start with this, you know, I help high achievers overcome their loss. I went through that. You know, I always felt like there was something more in me, but I didn't know how to, you know, like bring it all out. Mm -hmm. But then looking back, I was always a high achiever, but I had what we call the imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. Right. But what really hit home for me and made me really work on myself and change my whole perspective of life is when I lost my marriage, my business, my house and embarking this new journey as a single mom. Cause I went from super high to wow. really quickly, you know, and, and one thing I was going through at the time, and maybe a lot of people that can relate was it was so easy to blame everyone. He should have mm-hmm. done this. She should have done that. This should have never happened. Mm-hmm. But then when I realized, and this is, this is, this is not easy, but when I look at the whole event and I looked at the common denominator and I was like, that's me. I have to change. Right. And that's when I started to work on my internal growth in my personal development journey. You know, one of the things that really, you know, gave me that burning desire was my son. My son at the time was only four years old. And I looked at him and I'm like, you know, I am the role model to you my son, I myself was raised by a single mom with two kids who was emotionally and physically unavailable. And I had that fear of I was going to be the same, right. But the perspective, the perception changed when I realized, no, I have my story. I am not my mom. I am capable to give him the life that he deserves and the life that I want. This is just a journey. And that's when my whole perspective, my thinking pattern, my belief system, how I look at things, how I create my strategy in life and my mindset, the awareness of the mindset came out. So right. that's where I made the transition in life. And, you know, one thing you said, increment executive is, is interesting, right? You know, I've been in that business for, since college, <laughs> right? School for film, internship, just been in it. And one thing I realized towards the end, you know, even as, you know, a high paying executive flying business class all over the world without a purpose and a vision and a desire that just becomes a job. Mm -hmm. There has to be more in life, right? So that's why when I say high achievers is any single person, any person that knows that they want more in life, that is high achieving. I love that. I love that because I think it's often you hear high achieving and women listening might think, well, that's not me because, you know, I'm, I'm a stay at home mom or, you know, I don't have a big career, but I love how you're describing it. It's really just wanting more, having some goals, wanting to change your life in some way. And can I, if I could add on to that, I felt the same way, you know, I walked into marriage when I was like 29, 30, you know why? Because my belief system, everyone around me was like, you have to get married before 30 for some reason, right. <laughs> some odd reason. The deadline is looming. It's yeah. I like, there is a deadline. I'm 38 now. And I look back, I was like, oh my gosh. And I thought I was old, right. but it, it was that stigma that, oh, if you don't get married by this age, you're not successful. I'm like, that's all a bunch of BS. When I say BS, I'm talking about the belief system. Love that. Right. And then I just, I rushed into marriage that was not in harmony, you know, and when I was pregnant with my son, I did take some time out. So I understand the stay home mom, you know, and I still remember, I was like, oh, I know there's more. And I couldn't like sit still. I went to my therapist. I was like, there's more. And I was trying really hard to suppress it, mm-hmm. you know, but then I think the beauty of it is when I start to listen to the voice. 
Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, I don't need to just be a stay home mom. Mm-hmm. And for those that do want to, that's okay too, because yeah. we all have our desires and you live your life. I live my life. No yeah. one has a say in your life, but to, to, to kind of own up to what do I want in my life? What do I see myself? Now I could tell you as a woman, I see myself as a thought leader an entrepreneur, a mother. And I like to call myself a momager because right. in my goal in my life, my son's goals and vision, you know, is a part of that. So I sure. want to be very, um, 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 what's that word I'm looking for? Uh, involved with his mm. vision goal granted mm-hmm. he's only seven years old right now but still mm-hmm. <laughs> still <laughs> right <laughs> exactly so it's not just like oh I am giving up my life for the family vice versa I've done that and and the thing is that's when I fell that's when I fell really yeah. hard because one thing I've learned is when you don't love yourself this is a very big lesson I've learned I used to always just uh give my love to everyone and I'm on an empty cup I didn't take care of myself. I don't, I don't put makeup. I don't buy nice things for me. It's always to the family, you know, the ex-husband, my son, you know, especially the new moms, right? We forget about ourselves. Yeah. But I realized I was walking on an empty cup of water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, empty, yeah. An empty cup. Yeah. So when I start to love myself and fill myself with love, I have overflowing love. Now my son knows, you know, mommy's favorite person is myself, but I'm showing him that because I know when a person loves themselves the most, they're going to walk into healthy relationships, both business and professional. I'm yes. Sorry, both business and personal. Yes. And I mean, I, that's, that's so great because it's exactly what I'm talking about, right? Being selfish, putting ourselves first allows yeah. us to be that better mother or to give yeah. more in our relationships. And yet we're so conditioned to believe that we have to put ourselves last. So I, I love hearing that. Wonderful. And what, and also like, I loved what you said about being a full-time mom or stay-at-home mom and then feeling like you wanted more. I know for me, there was a point where I loved being a stay-at-home mom and I didn't want anything more and I was totally happy. And then I started to progress into a place of like, I think there's more for me now, but it came with a lot of guilt of feeling like I should just be happy being a mom. And I think a lot of women struggle with that too, of like either I'm just a mom or I'm just a whatever, or I feel guilty for not being happy being a mom and, and wanting more, you know, the shift that came to me was, um, let your goal, take care of your family and take care of your life. That was a shift, right? You know, I used to believe it's like, I have like, um, I have to give up myself and, you know, I have to live at like my ex-husband's goals or whatever. It's someone else's goals or someone tells me what to do. Right. But the peace really came when I have my goals and whoever I'm working with in the business or even relationship, I am in a new relationship now, a a beautiful relationship, right? I have my goals. He has his goals. These are very healthy. And we have a goal together. Mm -hmm. My mantra is let my goal take care of my life. Let my goal take care of my family within my goal and my vision. All of theirs are, are part of it. Now, now, now we're full. Mm, that's really a cool perspective right and one thing too I always say be grateful for what you have but never be satisfied yes that's the sweet spot where we can be grateful for what we have be present in our life fully fully alive and enjoying it and still having those goals and dreams and moving forwards yeah Mm -hmm. and that's when that's when um I like to call it that self-love That's when, you know, before when I was trying really hard, you know, when I was selfless always Mm -hmm. to the point that I lost myself, you know, I would, my therapist will tell me, you got to set boundaries and I would try and I would try and I would try. But when I realized what it is, when I start to love myself, I, I start to look at myself. Okay. So who is Lillian? Right. What is my relationship with myself? I start, I wrote a love letter to myself. Mm -hmm. That's when I know what my relationship with myself is. When I start to ask these questions and when I start to work on it, I don't even need to try to set those boundaries. It is set. You know, I start loving myself. I treat myself a certain way. I expect to be treated in a certain way. In return, I treat the people how I want to be treated. You see what I'm saying? Then I don't even try. It's set. That's why everything is N-word. 
Mm. Yeah. And, you know, going back to what you said about realizing that you were the common denominator and shifting from blame, I experienced that too, going through a divorce. It's so easy to blame, um, but that gets us nowhere. So I love that you were talking about, you know, seeing yourself as that common denominator and that you had to start looking within, I call it radical responsibility, really just taking, taking control of our own experience and, and taking the blame off others and really being like, okay, how am I contributing? How have I gotten here? And it sounds like you really went through that process. Yeah. A hundred percent. Because at one point I realized that no one's going to help me, but me. Yes. (laughs) No one's going to do it for me. (laughs) No one's coming to save us. I tried. I said, there's one, one, after my divorce, there's one whole year I was couch surfing friends after friends. I went to four different friends, oh, actually three friends, one my, and then my mom. And I was like, is someone going to come and save me? Someone going to do something for me. And guess what I was, you know, I was complaining. I was venting. And then I realized, no, I have to do it. I got to pick myself up. Mm, and that yeah. was a shift. Yes, we wait to be saved. And and I feel like culture sets us up as women to want to be saved. All of the Disney movies, it's all about being rescued, right? And so it's like, you know, it's our programming to feel like, wait, but where's where's the person who's going to sweep me up and rescue me? And like you said, when you realize like that person is me, I'm the hero in my own story who's going to rescue myself. Yeah. It's like, that's when we start doing the work. So So when you went from you know, couch surfing, wanting to be saved to really like taking that radical responsibility. I know you've shared mindset has been a big part for you, but what were some of the steps that you started taking to get yourself to that place of taking responsibility, saving yourself? Yeah. Okay. So the first step was the desire, but there was one defining moment I will never forget this moment. I remember it like yesterday. I could sneak, uh, smell it. I could feel it. I was at my friend's place. So in an apartment, my son was with me and her dogs. And I was sitting there. I was just like in deep thought, like, I don't know what to do. And then my four-year-old at the time was like, hey, mommy, are you okay? And then he looks at me and he goes, mommy, are we going to have our own place soon? I just lost Mm. it. (laughs) And I said, of course, I was like, mommy just fell, but I'm going to get back up. But that was the first step as that desire. That was that moment I made a very definitive decision that I am going to rise the F up. Excuse my language. (laughs) Uh, We swear here. You can swear. (laughs) Okay, cool. I I was like, I'm going to rise because my thought, like literally the emotion was, I am so tired to wait for the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm going to light this bitch up. Like, you know, because, you know, I'm like, I have a kid, right? So that was the first step. That was the first step was that desire and made that decision. Mm. And then the next step was I started to look for my vision and purpose. Because I was so stuck. I had no idea what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I was literally just going through day by day. So that's when I started to really, you know, dig deep. So what do I want? One big question I ask myself all the time. I have my clients do it. What is the legacy? If today is your last day, who do you want to be remembered as? Mm -hmm. Who is that person? And let's start there. So start from the end, right? And then once I was clear, and when I mean clear, I mean like crystal clear. This is when you just have fun. Use your imagination. Be like a kid like again. Think about all the lives that you want. Everything that you want, just put it together, right? Yeah. And then that became my roadmap. Mm. That became, and I I just start to take action every single day, one day at a time, one day, 1% at a time, one step forward, one step forward, just 1% every single day. And it became very simple. When you have a purpose vision, you know, we're heading towards that's your North star. So when I plan my day, you know, it's, is is this, is this going to take me to where I'm going towards, or is this not? And that's how I make my decisions because we're making decisions every day. Right. And then for me, my son really held me accountable because I was on my own. Sure. Yeah. You know, so, and I didn't have, by then I've already spent like some time. It was a few years because the marriage and then the fall of the marriage. And, and I was just like, I can't go there anymore. So what I did, what the transition came is when you have a goal that is so big, that inspires you and scares you and gives you the goosebumps, 
That's the magic word, the goosebump. Goosebumps. Okay? If the, you know, dream so big, and I'm not going to be the only, I'm not the only person that's going to say this dream so big. It's like, oh, like, can you do that? I know. Oh, I, I know. I love, I love how Brene Brown <laughs> says it. She's like, if your dreams don't make you pee a little bit because you're so scared, then it's not big enough. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yes. And you just, just think very big. And that what happened with me is I get inspired every day. I jump out of bed. My, all my energy now, because this is something that scares me and excites me and I, and I know yeah. I want it and I have mm-hmm. it. All my energy is there. So I'm not paying any energy to the past. I can't fix the past. Mm-hmm. I can't, it's already mm-hmm. done, but I live in the now to create the next. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that. Live in the right? now to create the next. That's so yeah. good. So, so that's where my attention became. Right. So the, the number one thing is the desire. You know, my desire is my family. My desire is my legacy. So I live by three F um, family, faith and fulfilling my legacy. Love that's it. Love mantra. it. I love it. And, and that's what I go with every single day. And when you're so focused on that too, the people that are in the same belief in the same energy, we start to surround ourselves. Yeah. Right. Yeah. One of the thing, one of the desire for me. So this is a good, great. I think it's going to be great for your podcast. One of the desire for me to keep loving myself, making my sh- my son knows about it because I, my goal is for him to grow up in this environment. So he loves himself. And when he mm-hmm. loves himself, the wife that he marries, she's going to love herself. Mm-hmm. When you have two happy people together, together, you guys could create more. But if you're finding mm-hmm. happiness from each other, you're not, it's just oh, not going to happen. It's so true, right? That also goes in business relationships, by the way. Right. Really yes. Does. Partners, it really does. collaborations, yeah. like, but yeah, in relationships, I mean, I certainly did that. I picked a partner because I thought, oh, he makes me happy. And I wasn't making myself happy. Right. So it was like, no, doomed to fail. But yeah. Two happy people find your happiness yeah. within yourself and find someone else who's also doing that. And then you don't need each other. You're just enjoying being together and being a team and lifting each other up exactly. because, you know, who wants to hang out with a Debbie Downer all day? <laughs> who, who everyone loves to hang out yep. with someone that's positive, that has their stuff together. Because even if you're having not a great day, you see them, you're like, oh, you get lifted up. Well, yeah, and it's even like, we like lift each other up. Even like this podcast, right? Like listen to women like you who are positive, who are speaking into your potential. Even if you don't have anyone in your life, like hang out here, right? Hang out with you. Like that's how we're going to change is by surrounding ourselves, like you said, with those voices of inspiration and encouragement, positivity. Yeah. And the people, like a big shift for me was I used to, I have, you know, like everyone, we all have different circle of friends. I used to have a circle of friends I've known for a long time. Um, Not at least I still have them, (laughs) but the conversation is a lot of complaining, you know, Mm. oh, my relationship is working out. How come there's no good guys out there? Or, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. It's a lot of complaining and a lot of venting. Mm -hmm. And I used to be a part of that. I used Mm -hmm. to engage. Now Mm -hmm. I don't. Yeah. Because I've also learned that when I am putting that kind of energy in, that's all I'm going to see. Right. And that's not being self-love. Right. That's telling for me, I feel like when I'm complaining, I'm telling, I'm saying to the universe, or I'm saying that, why am I being treated this way? Yeah. Versus I have another set of group of uh, amazing, beautiful women I hang out right now, always very successful, loving relationship. They're praising you know, the relationships are talking about what they've learned. They just keep going. You know, when there is a problem, they're not complaining. They're saying, Hey, I have this problem. What's the solution? Right. That's a complete yes. shift in energy. And also, you know, with the people that believes in themselves, right. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna say like invest in themselves. It's self-love mm-hmm. too. I mm-hmm. never actually understood what that meant to be honest with you. And I know, you know, I'm not going to be the first to say it. A lot of people say, you know, invest in yourself, invest in yourself, right? But what I really understood now after I started doing that, it's my worthiness, my self love because I believe I can do it. Yeah, and change. you do hear that a lot, but I think not everyone really 
invest in themselves in the right way. Right. I think people could think, oh, investing in myself means, you know, going to the spa, which, hey, we all love going to the spa or taking a vacation. It's all good. But what's going to what? How can you invest in yourself that's actually going to get you to the next level to help you to grow, to go towards your desires? That's a different kind of investing, in my opinion, anyways. Oh, hundred percent. And, and I understand those milestones because I've been there. <laughs> yeah. It was a growth to really fully un- understand, internalize why the Bill Gates of it all also is the best thing you could do for you is invest in yourself. Yeah. Right. It is that personal growth. It is that belief that you can, when, when, you know, there was one point in my life, I was hesitant to invest in myself. But now to see, to just be very honest, when I don't do that, I'm coming from a place of fear. Totally. You know, the fear that I'm not going to be able to deliver. Yes, totally. It's, you know, a a client said this to me just yesterday. She said, I would, wouldn't have hired a coach before because I didn't believe that my goals were possible. But now that I believe they're possible, I'm willing to invest in the coach. And I, and I, thought that was a really interesting statement because it's so true. If you don't believe it's even possible, why would you invest in something that's going to get you there? It's usually the fear. It's always the fear that holds, you know, someone back, but fear is, could be a healthy thing because it was a fear. Honestly, it was a fear of me being homeless with my son Mm. Um, that propelled me, that Mm -hmm. made me hit that gas and be like, Nope, that's not happening. Mm-hmm. this is happening <laughs> and then fast forward after my divorce a year year and a half I bought my own house you know that was my my amazing goal at the time because everyone was like you need to this is when like COVID was just happening right very different mindset with what's going to happen yeah with the economy I you know was trying to figure things out I was still in the middle of a divorce but I was like nope I that's what I'm going to do I got a lot of rejections even from real estate agents not, I'm right. not doing it. <laughs> I'm right. serious. But I got it. I got into the home that I want in the area that I want, you know, um, that would provide a good school district and a good environment for my son. And just, and that's the only thing I'm focused on is work. That's so inspiring. Home. It's so inspiring to hear that for single moms who are listening to this because uh, it is possible. And I think it's so hard when you're, when you're struggling so much, like you say, with loss and divorce, single parents, whatever it might be, it's so hard to believe that it's possible. We need to hear from women like you who are saying like, it is possible if you can do it, anyone can do it. Right. We need to surround ourselves with those stories. Yeah. And another thing, act as if I know we talked about it before the podcast. Yeah. That's what changed me because I really understood feeling is a secret, right? If I feel Mm -hmm. the belief when I believe and I have that faith, I start to develop that faith every single, I'm still working on it. It never ends. Right. Um, I feel it. I take action and that's, what's going to happen. If I'm thinking fear and I feel that, And I take action and that's, what's going to happen. I loved what you said about believe it and feel it and then take action. And that's something I practice as well, but I'm wondering if you could give some advice to women who are listening, who are maybe like, okay, so I've got the desire or I've got the goal. How do I feel emotion about something that isn't real yet? Repetition. Repetition. So for anyone to make changes, there's two ways. One is emotional impact. So COVID-19, 9-11, a divorce, you know, usually it's, it's just something negative. That's mm-hmm. when people change. Mm-hmm. Second is repetition. It's a change of habit. Mm-hmm. Even the thinking is also a habit. The belief is also a habit. You know, one thing I've really learned, my belief my whole life before I started to have the awareness of who I am was other people's belief that was put on me Mm. belief that you need to get married by 30. Right. Right. (laughs) Yeah. That was put on me. Oh, you know, you're you're married, have a kid. You should, you should be a stay home mom. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, but again, when I say that it's totally okay to be a stay home mom, it's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, (laughs) It's so much work. It's so much work, right? Yeah. 
but it's to reaffirm it in your mind over and over again. When I say reaffirm, it's these affirmations, right. the affirmations created from the place of your goal, your vision, everything from the end. You know, when I said my mindset strategy changed before I would be like, uh, well, I want to get there. I don't know how I'm looking mm-hmm. at from my current and current mm-hmm. place mm-hmm. to a place I want to go, but I feel stuck. Mm -hmm. The change is I start to think and make decisions from the end as it's Mm -hmm. already done. Yes. Right. And the only way to do that is repetition, repetition, repetition. You know, so one of my visualizing your end result. Yeah. And then taking action every day as if you are that person experiencing the end result. Yes. Yeah. So, because that's it's when I think about my vision and goals it's already done. I don't think about if it's going to happen, will it happen that I used to think that way, Mm -hmm. but it was a decision that was made, you know, Napoleon Hills and thinking grow rich talked about, he has a whole chapter on decision, you know, successful people make decisions quickly. Yeah. Right. And I, again, that took me some learning process to understand that, but it's true. You just, you make a decision with Mm -hmm. what you have right now today, with everything that you desire and your purpose is already done. You make a decision and you operate from there. So that's where, that was a different entry point of how I started to make my decisions. I'm not making decisions of, from the place where I hope this will happen. I Mm -hmm. hope I will be successful and making to the decision. I'm making my decisions from the place that I'm a, I'm a self-made millionaire, right? Mm -hmm. Entrepreneur. I'm a mom you know, I'm creating a positive impact to the world. You know, I'm a good human to society. Right. And then also all my financial goals, I'm making decisions from there. Yeah. I think, you know, it'd be great to use some examples for, for our listeners. And one that comes to my mind is, um, confidence because a lot of women tell me like, I want to be confident which, yeah. which it's like, it's almost a little bit abstract, right? Of like, okay, so visualize yourself as a confident woman, but you know, what do you think about that? Is that a great goal for someone, a desire to connect to, or do they need it to be more specific? Have you seen this before? No. Uh. Uh-uh. Okay. So for the people that's listening, I just whipped out a stick figure. The head is bigger than the body because the body is the instrument of the mind. Mm-hmm. Now the head is divided into two. There is a conscious and then there's a subconscious confidence. Um, there's this thing called the self-image, right? Are, are you familiar with the self-image? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, right. That all sits in the subconscious mind. Okay. 96 to 98% of what we do comes from the sex subconscious mind. Results come from here. Yeah. Everything comes from here. So when we form this idea, when you use your imagination, when you form this idea of the life that you want, the person that you are, it's in your conscious. And here's the key. We want to, we want to take that idea, push it from the conscious to the subconscious. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's done by repetition. That's showing up every single day to do it. That's acting as that person every single day. So you're in the feeling when everything goes into your subconscious, it sets out a thing called the vibration. It's energy, right? And you can feel it when someone is very confident and they walk into the room when they're around you, they don't need to say anything. You could just feel it. Exactly. It's energy. It's energy. And once this is an alignment, your body, remember the body is an instrument of mind. The body will start to go and take action. Mm-hmm. according to this so um and then paradigm paradigm is a multitude of habits we are, we are creatures of habits totally right? so when we when i say you know repetition to change our habit we're we're talking about multiple habits and to do that is you want to change one or two at a time according to your end result yep right so the way the best way to explain it is like we're always on autopilot without knowing, like I've been in autopilot for 35 years Mm -hmm. until I lost everything. And I realized that everything that I was doing wasn't working. I had to hit my version of my rock bottom. Mm -hmm. It was tough. I like, I was in depression. I had failure all over me. 
but to only learn that failure is not an identity. It's just an experience. Okay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, to, for me to focus on my vision and goal and who I am, the one question someone asked me was, so what do you want to do? Who are you now? I'm like, I had no idea. Cause my job was my identity. My marriage right. was my identity. Those right. are not there anymore. Who am I? Right. But once I have that direction, now my autopilot starts to shift. I start to shift gears and you yeah. shift one gear at a time. Right. Yeah. So by doing that, it's repetition. It's hanging out with the right people. I'm, I'm just going to be honest, having a coach accountability yes. is the key. It's accountability so key. is insurance to success. Yes. And it's okay to ask for help because I've been at the point where I needed help. I didn't know. And I've invested. Tony Robbins did the same thing, right? Mm-hmm. I invested in myself, I invested in myself in the sense that I need to get there. Mm-hmm. Actually, when I say I need to get there, I don't need to get there. I want to get there. I made a decision to get there. Right. Right. I desire yeah. to get there. Yeah. Right? So yeah. That's, I, happen. that's a great, uh, illustration. And, and, uh, if you want to see, I love your little figure that you pulled out, you can yeah, I'll, pop I'll it over to YouTube you. channel and watch the video. You can yes. watch it, but <laughs> yes. Or maybe I'll post a picture. Cause it's so cool. I love it. Uh, I'll it to you. yeah. And also like what you're saying is, you know, repetition as we're talking about confidence, what I hear in that is like, take one step every day. that feels scary, right? Oh, like yeah. step into fear a little bit every day, whether it's like setting a boundary, like you were talking about before, or, you know, listening to listening to a podcast, having a difficult conversation, taking action, taking a course, hiring a coach, like do one thing every day. That's scary. And that's how you're going to become confident. And it brings it back to that acting as if you already are, what would a con- what would confident version of me do today? Yeah, exactly. That's a great way to say it. You know, when I, when my, my whole thing is Lillian at the end. Okay. Lillian at this level, how would she be thinking? How would she make the decision? Because, you know, a person that's making five figures and seven figures and 10 figures, everyone's thinking very differently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And think about your life too. You know, for me, when I was uh, pregnant and that didn't work and when my son was born, I was like, Auntie, I want to work. And then I went back to become an executive and I was so busy and I wasn't there for my son. Oh, well, that's not what I want. Mm-hmm. Right. So when I lost everything, I was like, so what do I want? And, and I started to make decisions from there. Okay, this is what I want to create. This is the, the amount that I'm going to earn. This is a lifestyle. I am going to be that mom that is around him all the time. And he is going to be able to talk to, and I'm going to be his biggest supporter. And I start to build from there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I love it. So I love it. So many, you. yeah, so many great nuggets here. It's just like, I love it. One thing after another, you've got so much truth that you're, that you're speaking and it's just resonating. And I know there's so many women listening who are feeling lost or they have gone through loss and they're struggling and they're in that place. And I know this is going to give them some hope and, and courage and inspiration because you've done it. You're walking the talk. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the difference between therapy and coaching. You know, Mm -hmm. I, I, please allow me to share this. Cause when I learned about this, it blew my mind. I used to invest in myself by going to therapy. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with going to therapy. I'm just sharing my own experience. I was going on a weekly basis for years, but the thing is I was talking about my problems. Yeah. I was working on my inner child. I was, when I felt depressed, when I had anxiety, when I panicked, I was given pills to my chemical imbalance. Right. Mm -hmm. now the difference with that and then at one point I was like I am still stuck I am not moving forward I do not want any more pills anymore Mm -hmm. it it got to that point and the thing is at that time I don't really understood this whole coaching world Mm -hmm. I really had no idea that's I blew my mind and I know if it did for me someone else probably felt the same way or it's you think it's the same thing right Coaching is to help you create faith, help you identify your vision. And then the faith in the belief system is so powerful because once you know where you're heading towards, you're going to start to see, oh, this belief system or what, whichever belief uh, that you have, right, 
it's not in harmony with it. And then you start to examine where did this come from? You know, so for one thing for me, one of the reasons why I always had this imposter syndrome, I felt like I never, I was not good enough because my fifth grade teacher in Taiwan, I, I, lived, I was born here in the US, but I was raised in Taiwan for a little bit. He said, my best job is to become a janitor. Wow. And I was in a culture where you only listen to the teacher. He didn't like right. me because I was an American kid in Taiwan. So I, freedom of speech, I asked questions, I talked, so I was not the yeah. kid. But that, that stayed with me and affected my self-confidence and my self-image. Sure. And I didn't realize that until I started to ask myself, where did all these beliefs come from? Right. So understanding your inner child is good. But for me, like I'm ready to grow up. I'm working up the grown up. <laughs> right. I don't right. want to stay there. So when it shows up, I get it. OK, that's the past. But I'm working on growing, growing myself up every single day. Growth never ends. Right. The most successful people, they'll say life is your teacher. You're always growing. You know, the most successful leaders are also forever students. We're always growing. That's so that's right. a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate <laughs> you sharing that. And I, and I totally 1000% agree. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I've done a lot of therapy and it has its, mo it has its time yes. and there is a time where it's what you need. And then I think you do get to a point where it's like, okay, I'm getting sick of hearing myself talk about my problems. And that's when I think it's time to shift to a coach because you're ready to, as you say, be present future yeah. and start having the accountability and the guidance to make action and steps towards what you want to create. And, yeah. and, uh, that's a, a really great example because a lot of people don't understand what coaching is and, and really how powerful it can be in your life. Yeah. And one thing I want to add to that, one of my clients actually said that he said he never, uh, thought about it until he really like shift his whole mindset. He was like, when I used to go to therapy, even though my day is good before I go in, I'm already thinking about my problems. Sure. What to talk about. Yeah. Right? So this, this went back to what I was saying earlier, you know, I always, one of the habits that I've made change. And I always tell my clients is to don't vent. It's not a great habit. It's not, it's just don't vent. Don't right. Vent. Right. Don't yeah. vent and don't complain. Complaining is not getting any more, the more of that, the more you're going to see. And I remember that was me. <laughs> me too. Me too. <laughs> not changing exactly <laughs> right? yeah venting yeah. can feel good in the moment because it's almost like we feed off it and then other people vent and we get that you know energy from it but yeah it's just keeping us focused on what's not working and I know for me too when I when I was like I'm so sick of hearing myself vent, I started looking at more positivity and now it's like I, I rarely focus on what's not working because it's just a waste of my time yeah. And you know, yeah. the saying misery loves company, right? That's I guess. <laughs> so true. <laughs> like I'm good. I'm, I'm moving on, you know, I love it. I love it. So, um, what's next for you? What's, what's on the agenda? You bought a house, you got this career, like what's one of your goals that you're working towards now? Oh my gosh. I'll, I'll tell you my big vision, but it is very big. So I don't want to scare anyone, but I love it. Cause I scare myself every day. <laughs> Excellent. So I, I am on a mission to create positive impact to a billion people around the world through coaching, through IP. I did come from the movie business and also in film and TV. Love so, it. so that's where the shift in the power is too. When I um, lost my last venture, everything went down. I felt like I got burned out by the business. I was like, no, mm -hmm. I'm done. I don't want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. You know, and then when I worked on myself to realize that I've like actually attracted those results mm -hmm. and I worked on, so what do I want to do? Who am I? And once I had a purpose, you know, that energy shift completely changed. Right. Right. I'm no longer looking at it just like, okay, it's a job. Well, I got to get a job. I got to sell this. I got to do that. Like, you know, trying to get on a project. It's like, now I'm in creation mode. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that inspires me every single day, right? Mm -hmm. That inspires me to take these actions to break through my fear, my comfort zone every single day to get to that big, uh, to grow into that big dream. And I love right. what Stevie Harvey says, your dream has to be so big. It makes the fear look so small. I love that. Right. I love it. And also yeah. like, why not? 
why not you? Why not me? Why not any of us to reach our dreams? And the more we see evidence of other women doing it, the more we believe it, it's possible for ourselves. So like, I totally love that. A hundred percent. Yeah. Amazing. Oh my gosh. This has been so inspiring. You are just a powerhouse and I love your wisdom, everything you've been teaching yeah. us. Like it's so good. Thank you so much. I have one last question that I ask everybody, how are you being selfish these days? Oh my gosh. I set myself as priority every day. Yeah. My vision and goals, everything. My son knows that, you know, yeah. it's just that morning I have a rigid routine that I love, which is a lot of self-care, which is my meditation. My, I like, I just call it my personal development time. Everyone allows me with that you know, um, my son knows that he respects it before we go to sleep. We tell each other how much we love ourselves. Mm. Right. And then even the little things, this might not sound like a big thing for some of you guys, girls, but for me, it's a big deal. I start to put makeup on. I buy Mm. nice clothes for myself. Mm -hmm. I buy, I just got a new car, BMW, a car that I wanted. Mm -hmm. right I used to drive a Toyota because I was just like being like okay gotta take care of everyone but not me Mm -hmm. and it's taking care of it's like these little things dressing up you know and when I dress up it's not for anyone else it's for myself when I hang out with my 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 son's friends the moms they're like why are you putting makeup on it who is it for for me yeah (laughs) for me exactly So that's, that's how I take care of myself every single day it's these little nuances you know, and when I do, when I show up like for myself, for my life, for my visions and my goals, people around me start to respect that. Absolutely. Um, and again, it's acting as if I know for me, when I started doing the same thing, I'm like, I'm not go- leaving my house today, but I'm putting on makeup and doing my hair and putting on an outfit that feels good for me. I, again, it's not for anyone else, but all of a sudden I feel more professional. I feel more confident. I feel more excited about my day and I'm bringing different energy. So I love that. And it is, it's these small things, but they actually over time really do. And again, coming back to what you said about repetition, they really do make a difference. And that does build your confidence when you feel good, when you make yourself feel good about yourself, that is confidence. And that's self-care. Totally. I had a client the other day show up and she'd had her hair cut and styled for the first time in five years. And she felt so damn good. And it's like, she's like, why did I wait so long? You know, but now she's understanding the impact it's having on her just to take care of herself and look good and feel pretty. And it's amazing. Wow. That's so wonderful. Yeah, Yeah, I know. We're all doing it. We're all being brave. We're all showing up for ourselves, whatever that looks like. Awesome. So share how we can get into your world. Where can we find you? Give us all the details. So I have Instagram. Um, if you Instagram is the Instagram handle is at Lily and Victoria official Lily with double L. So L I L L I N B I C T O R A. O-R-I-A official. Um, I also have a Facebook group where I show up with teachings, free challenges. It's a very uplifting community. So it's facebook.com slash group slash awesomest lifestyle official. Amazing. So yeah. And we'll put those links in the show notes. Thank you. And yeah, anyone who wants to check it out, go check out Lily and Victoria. You won't regret it. (laughs) Thanks so much for hanging out with us today. Thanks for having me. Take care. And thanks everybody listening. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.